Hi, Rob here. I was just going to do a video in response to Sister Crystal. I heard a video from her this morning, which was pretty cool. She was just kind of chatting to us on her video, and I, I've i studied it in depth. I haven't heard anyone else teach this about Judas. She was kind of questioning, you know, what happened to Judas um, when he died, um, when he was, when he committed suicide, she said. I, I want to get into what I've learned because um, I have a lot of insight that I got from the Holy Scripture that's already there that I haven't heard other people teach on. So I want to teach on what I know. And uh, any comments to add to, please post below if it's true and lines up with the Scripture so it doesn't waste any time. Um, so the, the main thing is I want to start on Judas obviously betrayed Jesus and that allowed him to be arrested and put to death, okay? So, which was what he came to do. I'm not saying that, you know, he did, didn't, I think it was part of scripture, I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna, the other things I'm going to mention I'm a lot more sure about, but this one, I think it said something about, it's better than if he had not been born. Judas, right? I think that's in Acts. I think it mentioned in Acts. Um, it'd be better if it wasn't, he wasn't born than for him to live and do that. So it's definitely a horrible thing, and it would be better if he hadn't have even lived. And now, been born is particular. Obviously, he could have died in the womb, right? Um, then he'd have gone to be with God. It just have been better if he hadn't even stepped foot out of the womb, is basically what it's saying, than to have done that. So it's, he's not going to have, like, I think it's an eternal thing he's going to have to bear. You know what I mean? Because we, now it does say that the bad works will be burned away. Okay. So he's just saying it would be better if he hadn't been born because then he wouldn't have had to have that works, those works been burned away from him. I, I don't know. To go through that and betray the son of God. I mean, who would want to do that? You know what I mean? That's like the worst thing you could, could do. I mean, denying him what Peter did, that's bad, but betraying him is even worse because you're, you know, it's anyway. So, but it says specifically that Satan entered into him. Remember when they were eating, and he dipped the sop and gave it to Judas, and then Satan entered into him, and he said, "Go do what you have to do." You know. So then he went out and hooked the guys up, and they came out and arrested him. So we know that it was Satan that entered him to have him do that. Okay. Then in in the latter part of the book of Matthew, can't remember the exact chapter. I think it's uh, around chapter 20 somewhere. I, I really can't remember, but it's it says that Judas came, he brought the money back. He threw the money he got, or the silver to be exact, back into the temple priests. He threw it back to him, said, I've retained innocent blood. Then he went and repented himself. It says he repented himself. Boom, right? Then it says he went and hanged himself, okay? Now, if he really repented, he wouldn't have hanged himself, right? literally and then you need to compare it to acts unless acts is a false book then this is how it how it is in acts it says that if you look in the first chapter it says he purchased a field with the wages of iniquity and falling headlong he his bowels he cut his he was cut asunder in the midst and his bowels gushed out okay it didn't say he hung and died hanging. You know what I mean? He was cut asunder and his bowels gushed out. And falling headlong, it means that, that means he wasn't hung and then fell off the thing and burst open. Falling headlong means you're standing up and you fall over, right? Not that you're not that you're being hung, right? And then you fall down. If someone falls headlong, that means they're walking or they're running and they fall like off they're on their feet, okay? So, you got to figure that too. So, we've got two different things going on here. So, years back, I think it was around 99 or 2000, somewhere around there. I think it was like before 2000. Um, I went into the Greek text. I had the Strong's Concordance and the King James, and I got the manuscripts they translated the King James from. I went in there. I looked at the word hanged himself. Hanged himself is one word in the Greek in Matthew, in the book of Matthew. I looked at that word, 
And uh, Crystal, actually, you could do it now too. You look in the, in the text in that book you just got, and you can see that word hang himself. It's different than the Strong's word that it refers to. There's a different ending, if I remember right, on that word. It's spelled differently in the Greek. What I did, I went into, uh, I was living in Fresno, California at the time, and I went into a, uh, the Fresno State University in their uh, ancient Greek text that they have there, and Greek to English dictionaries to be exact. So they had a lot of Greek to English dictionaries that were older. So I looked through those trying to find that one word in alphabetical order. The closest thing I could find was hanged, okay? So it, it matched, all right? It, it's really hanged, but so I had to pray in the spirit and say, God, you know, how does this work together? How can he be hanged? If he hanged himself, that means he committed suicide, right? Unless he hanged himself and didn't die, and then somehow got off. You know, that doesn't make sense, though. That would have been explained. So, you know, I just, I went and just thought about it in the spirit, and I I figured this, you know, if, if he went and threw the money back at those who hired him to do the dirty deed of turning Jesus over, okay, then he's, in their face, he's showing, okay, I repent, I'm wrong. What do you think those priests would think he would do? They're probably they were probably worried about you know wrongfully killing Jesus or having him put to death because he really hadn't done anything wrong. So they were probably really stressed out on the the Roman Empire's power at the time, maybe coming back on them, saying, "Wait a minute, you know," and then coming back on them that they killed an innocent man. So. They probably didn't want any more information coming to the Romans, so he, they probably figured Judas would turn around and run and go go tell the Romans, too, that he was wrong. So, so you know, he already told the, the priests he was wrong, so they would figure, yeah, he's going to go and tell the Romans now, so we need to stop him from telling them everything that happened, you know. So, if you go to Acts, it says... I, I looked it up, and I studied that whole part of scripture word for word in the Greek, and I, it says, he purchased a field, okay? Now, wait a minute. That's another question. If he threw the money back at them, how could Judas purchase a field if he didn't have the money anymore? And so I looked that word up, he, in the Greek, and do this, Crystal, you'll see this. It is a plural word that means they. It's they purchased a field. They who? Who had the money? The priests. They purchased the field. So they could do what? Bury Judas in that field of unknown dead people. And if they didn't want people to know who he was, you know, you got to put it all together. If he hanged himself, that's a figure of speech. Because in doing that, you know, if he was, you know, Judas was really probably emotionally overcharged and overcome with regret, and he just went in there and repented himself and didn't think what the ramifications of that would be or what what they would do to him for that. Um, they killed Jesus, so why wouldn't they kill him, you know? So I'm sure that it's, it's a figure of speech. He hanged himself. So then they came after him and cut his bowels open and gushed his guts out, okay, and purchased that field to bury him in it. I mean, how else can you reconcile all that scripture to work together? If anyone has any... Um, insight on that post it but that's the only thing I can think of and another there's another thing kind of separate to what I'm talking about about Judas and he's referred to as the son of perdition okay son of perdition um, a lot of people refer, refer to that as the Antichrist and there's a really confusing doctrine that's common saying that there's an Antichrist guy which there is not. Um, Apostle John explained in 1 John, the Antichrist is, is a spirit of anyone that denies that Jesus came in the flesh and died and rose again. That is Antichrist. So a lot of people mistake, they'll, they'll, they'll be trying to say the Antichrist and the closest thing to the Antichrist would be the beast. But the beast is global government, headed by a, probably headed by a man, you know, but it's a global government. It's not the Antichrist. And it is Antichrist, okay? But the, the terminology is really stupid, you know, the way they choose to go about it. But 
we go to the scripture, son of perdition, right? That means the son that perishes. I mean, Judas perished. He got murdered, you know? But I think if, and I don't think that this, that Satan would be a son, okay? Because he's an angel, all right? A son would have to be a man. I don't see anywhere in scripture where son, where they refer to an angel as a son. They say one like the son of God, it's kind of like an angelic being in Daniel. So it could be an angel that looks like Jesus or is kind of like Jesus, but, or it is Jesus and they just described it as that. But that's another point. The main thing is Jesus, Judas was the son of perdition and he perished. Perdition means to perish. He perished in the flesh. They killed him. And also, perdition, Jesus perished on the cross. He died on the cross. So, the son of perdition. So, Judas was the one that caused Jesus to perish. And he was perished by the, that's the wrong term, the wrong way to say it. But he perished at the hands of the high priest. Okay? So, that's how it fits that I can see. I don't see any other way to not deny any other part of scripture. So, and then this thing, they, there's a common theory, and I've had people come back on me on other videos on this, that they hung Judas on the, Judas hung himself on a rope, and the rope broke and he fell on the ground and his bowels gushed out. But I just explained how that wouldn't work because he fell headlong. Headlong means you gotta be standing up and fall over, like keel over. Obviously, if they're gonna cut his belly, he's gonna keel over and fall headlong. Okay? It's not going to be falling off a rope, you know? And really, I mean, come on. Have you ever heard of a body falling down and their guts fell out? I mean, come on. That's just illogical. So, especially if he's been up there for a while, you know how the body gets hard and all that? I don't know. But anyway, it, it's... And if you look at the Greek word for cut asunder in the midst, okay, it has to... It's like a verb. It's like uh, someone else did it. Like someone else cut him, Okay. And it says, they purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. So you go into context in that verse. It's not he, it's they. They purchased the field with the, uh, war, the wages of iniquity, the silver, right? And falling headlong, he was cut asunder. So they're the ones that cut him asunder. He was talking about them. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I, I don't see any other logical way to do it. Because Jesus is logic, by the way. Jesus is the word. The word word is logic. It's logos, which means logic. Logic is correct reasoning. I've been over this in other videos too. Jesus is the correct reasoning of God made flesh. So anyway, it's correctly reasoned out. I don't see any other way to put it all together. So if anyone has any other insight, post it or make another response video, it'd be cool. Um, and you know, you gotta figure too. I mean, you've, anyone seen this video, if you've seen a lot of my other videos, I explain how 1 Timothy 4.10 says, All men shall be saved. Okay? So just, and I want to go to this too. Remember, if Satan entered Judas, and then he went and did that, you remember when Jesus looked at Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. And he was talking to Peter. So Satan was in Peter at that time too. Peter's not going to hell forever when he dies. He's he's a saint. He's with, with the Most High right now. Or in the transition, you know, he's asleep and he's coming back with Jesus. So you gotta, you gotta put it all in balance, you know. And um, if if Satan entered into Judas and did it, then it's the influence of Satan that, that that chose to do it, not Judas. Judas was like a weak vessel that couldn't resist. You know what I mean? He had no. Remember, the Holy Spirit hadn't come down on the church yet. So. And just as he had been better, he hadn't been born. It doesn't mean he's going to go hell, for, hell forever when he dies. It's just, it would have been better if he had died in the womb and not been born because then he wouldn't have had the experience going through that of betraying the Son of God who created him. You know what I mean? Who would want to do that? He's not getting, getting any reward for it. You know what I mean? So, that's what I'm seeing on this. Um, there's something else I want to mention too, but I'm going to do that on a separate video. So, I hope you're blessed by this crystal and any insight too, you know, throw it in the comments because uh, we keep learning, you know. It's an ongoing process. We build on what we have, okay? So, 
blessings in Christ Jesus to everybody. And uh, take care in Christ Jesus and continue on to get to improve in Him. Take care.